meteors are bombarding our planet on a regular basis. Each year, it's estimated there are over 6,000 hits. They start off as asteroids in our solar system, but their trajectory sends them hurtling as meteors toward Earth, where they land as meteorites. Most are small and do little destruction. But one day, we could get hit by a big one. And if it's more than a kilometer wide, it will have catastrophic consequences. We know that the dinosaurs went extinct by an asteroid or comet that hurt the Earth billions of years ago. But we want to be able to do something about that going forward in the future. So for years, NASA, with help from 28 countries, has been working on a planetary defense system. The goal, to keep us safe from the one that could end it all. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 and DART. DART, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, is the first mission of its kind. Scientists have known, humans have known for a while that the Earth is hit by materials from space all of the time, asteroids and comets. This has gone on for billions of years. That's not new. What's new with DART is taking that first step to potentially do something about that. Nancy Chabot is a planetary scientist at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab near Baltimore and the coordination lead on the DART program. So the target for DART is a double asteroid system. And there's two asteroids there. There's the larger Didymos, which is about 780 meters. And it has a moon that goes around it, a moon asteroid that's named Dimorphos, 160 meters. Dimorphos is about the size of a small football field. The plan, send a spacecraft with a body that's about the size of a vending machine and slam it into Dimorphos and knock it off course, something that's never been done before. And so this, this whole challenge of hitting a small asteroid when it's 11 million kilometers away, when you have very little information about what this asteroid looks like at all and doing all of that autonomously, so the scientists at Johns Hopkins developed a way the spacecraft could guide itself to the intended target. It's called SmartNav. It had to be smart enough to tell the difference between these two asteroids within the last hour of the mission and then command itself autonomously to fire its thrusters to ensure it identified Dimorphos and hit Dimorphos head on. They chose an asteroid that was not a threat to Earth. The mission is considered a success if they can alter its direction. The goal of DART was definitely all about asteroid deflection, not asteroid destruction. The idea is that this small nudge would add up to a bigger change in its position with time. All right, two minutes out. Armed with a camera, the spacecraft provided NASA mission control real-time images as it moved into place for impact. It successfully collided with an asteroid on September 26, 2022, becoming humanity's first demonstration of asteroid deflection. It's uh, terribly exciting that we've taken this first step in what's called planetary defense. And it turns out the DART spacecraft did a better job than anticipated. It significantly changed the asteroid's direction. The multi-million dollar spacecraft was destroyed as planned, but the historic test is still providing new data. Of course, all the important work being done by NASA wouldn't have been possible without the knowledge we gain from the meteorites that land on Earth. These different materials are going to react differently if you use a kinetic impactor like DART, where you crash a spacecraft into it. You can see where that's going to react differently depending on the composition of that material. One of the thousands of meteorites landing here on Earth crashed through this roof in Golden, British Columbia. A woman in Western Canada had what you might call a bad day. A meteorite nearly hit her. The space junk landed right where she was just sleeping. It came through the roof right up in there. 
Bruce Hamilton was centimeters away from being fatally struck by the space rock. There was a loud crash. I had no idea where it came from. I jumped out of bed, turned on the light, and all I could see was a hole in my ceiling. I was so scared. I don't think I've ever been as scared as anything else in my whole life. At first, she didn't realize what she was dealing with. Well, at the time, I didn't know how special it was because it was just a rock at that time. And then um, later on, once we figured out it was a meteorite. Now, this space rock has its own special case and has been named the Golden Meteorite. This is some stuff off the roof. That's probably still some asphalt shingles and a few pieces of wood from the roof. For scientific study, Ruth provided the meteorite to the team at Western University in London, Ontario. They kept a small chunk to examine and returned it to Ruth. She's now receiving requests from all over the world for this famous rock. I haven't quite decided what to do with it. There's lots of organizations out there that want it. Um, you know, some of them are in museums, um, some personal collectors, and um, to go on auction or whatever. And I'm just taking my time to decide what to do with it. So here we have our Mineralogy and Petrology Museum, which has rocks from all over the earth of different types. This is Canada's largest university-based meteorite collection. More than 350 are housed at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. Chris Hurd is a professor at the U of A's Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. He's also the museum curator. He would love to add Ruth's meteorite to this collection. So what are we looking at here? Uh, these are some of the finest specimens that we have in our collection that represent different types of meteorites. Chris also tracks shooting stars using specialized cameras. The beauty of it is that if you have enough observations of that fireball, you can calculate an orbit, meaning you can actually figure out where in the solar system, approximately, that rock originated from. Important knowledge if we are going to figure out where the next potentially deadly asteroid might come from. He managed to capture these images of the meteor on its journey to Ruth's house. That one we picked up on one of our cameras. There are other observations as well that are being used. Taken from eastern Alberta, the fireball appears very low on the horizon and quite faint. I hear that Western Canada is a, is a particularly good place for this kind of work. Western Canada is a pretty good place because we're in the prairies that's relatively flat. There's good sort of sight lines. And also because of the land use in this part of the world is mostly far, uh, farming and you know and ranching. If something does fall, then the chances are better of actually getting out and finding it on the surface and being able to collect it. Chris is also working on better ways to preserve them. Which includes things like keeping them cold and keeping them out of the Earth's atmosphere and things like that so that they are better preserved over the long term. Recently, he was sent part of a 15-ton meteorite that fell in Somalia, and what he discovered was quite surprising. There were some unusual looking minerals inside, really minerals that I couldn't identify. And so when we delved into it more deeply, we realized that we had found at least two, and it turns out three now, new minerals, minerals that have never been found before in this particular meteorite. His research in turn is used by NASA because knowing what materials are in meteorites helps with future asteroid moving missions. The more that we can understand now about these potentially hazardous asteroids, both in terms of their physical properties and what they, their composition might be, and also the statistics of what's coming from where, that really does buy us time and understand for when there might be something even larger that is potentially hazardous. It's all one connected universe. And the DART program continues to process new data after its successful mission. It's proving to be a crucial first step toward a planetary defense system that could save us one day.
The good news is that once we have identified track and are tracking asteroids, you can actually have warning time of 100 years. So you're in the situation where you could do something like DART, where you could just give it a small nudge many years in advance and avoid a collision with the planet.